Hi YouTube, I'm Iwan. Welcome back to my auto repair videos. In this video, I'm going to give you some ideas on how to remove and replace the brake pads and drum for a 2004-2009 Toyota Prius. Alright, so first off, before we begin, I just want to say that electricity is involved in this braking system. So the first thing we should do is to either disconnect the battery or to, uh, at least, at the very least, take away the key fob. However, the easiest thing to do right now is to disconnect the battery. And we have to take off... Oh, never mind. Well, as you can see, we already disconnected it. <laughs> Alright, so next up is to jack the car up. As you can see, we already jacked it up. Uh, just in case, for safety reasons, put a jack stand in case the car collapses. I mean, the jack collapses. Alright, next up after that is to take out the tire. I'm sure we don't need to show you how to do that. And after that, we're going to be uh, revealing the brake drum. Now, in order to take this out, uh, it might be able to take it out by itself, but it might be rusty. So there are two ways to take it out when it's rusty. You can either try knocking it with a hammer. Um, I'm not going to show because it's already loose. Or you can use any bolt you can find, like these, and then screw them in. And what you're going to do is, after you screw it in, you're going to ratchet it in, and when it goes in far enough, it's going to push in, and that's going to bring the entire drum out because it's uh, acting against that. Uh, I'm not sure how to explain, but when I do this, maybe it'll be easier to demonstrate. Make sure I don't strip that. Okay. All right, so these are 12 millimeter bolts, by the way. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put uh, both of them on each side. Uh, there are two holes, by the way. And what we're gonna do is we're going to alternative, alternatively ratchet them and, uh, just a little bit each time until eventually it comes out. And I think this is already loose, so it might not be as good of a demonstration. But eventually, you should be able to just take it out by these two. And there we go. The brake drum is out, and now we are revealed to the inside with all the braking system. So our problem is that because one side of the wheel cylinder is torn, it's not exerting pressure on both sides equally. So that means one side this side is going to be going out further. And as you can see from here, with this part is what pushes up against the inside of this uh, 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 brake drum. Because of that, it's going to be breaking unevenly, and you can't see it, but I can feel it. It's pretty uh, rough instead of smooth, like how it should be. So at the very beginning, it's always a good idea to take a picture of everything beforehand, just so you know where everything is when you replace it. Or at least uh, don't do it, or don't uh, take out both of them at the don't take both this side and the other side out at the same time so that uh, when you put this back, you can compare this side to the other side. So first thing, first step is to take out the brake pads. In order to do that, we're going to take out these two springs. So this one and this one. Now the way it works is that there's a spring on the top here and, a, and there's a pin, you can see it right here. And when you take this spring out, this pin will probably go flying. So that's why we have this cardboard here, just in case that pin does go flying. But when you take this out, what you want to do is you want to just hold the pin back. Uh, you just want to feel around for it and just press down on it to make sure that it doesn't go flying. What you want to do is you want to take pliers. And you can see the pin right here has a rectangle shape and the spring has a corresponding rectangular hole. So what you want to do is you want to take your pliers and you want to push down on the spring and rotate it. So this is going to be a bit hard to show you at the same time as I'm doing it, but... Oh, I'm rotating the spring at the same time, so I gotta make sure I don't do that. Okay, there we go. So that's what the spring looks like. That's what the hole looks like. You see that there's actually a recess for the have the pin and the pin itself looks like this and you can see the t-shape there we go now we're going to do it on the other side this might be a bit harder for you to see got to feel around for that head i'm also rotating the pin again If, you're, if you can see that you're rotating the pin at the same time, you probably have to go deeper with the spring. There we go. So we finally got the other spring out. 
that's what they look like. I'm gonna put these two separate just in case they don't get mixed. I mean, they probably don't matter if they get mixed, but just in case. All right, so the next step is to separate the brake pads uh, from this spring right here. And uh, you can either do it from this side or this side, but this side seems like it's easier since there's more room. So what you wanna do is take uh, something with grip like these pliers. And what you wanna do is you want to grip it. I might not be able to show this because I'm a bit, might be a bit too weak for this. But the, basically the idea is just to sort of pry it out. So. All right, so my dad explained to me that a trick I could use is to sort of use this, um, this metal piece right here as leverage. So right here. And then put the grip right on this piece right here. So that I can use this part as leverage to force it out. And as you can see, it's going out just a bit. And there we go. It came out just like that. So once it comes out, it looks like this brake pad will come down. All right, make sure you don't break the spring, by the way. All right, so we're back to this side. Uh, like I said before, keep in mind that we want to work on only one side at a time. Now, before we go onward, just uh, make sure to keep some track of how the orientation is, like how this spring is facing, how all these different parts are facing, where the springs are, what they look like, uh, where, what, what parts they go into. Uh, we actually have video of it, so we don't have to write it down or anywhere, but really what you want to do is take uh, put some marks anywhere or just take a picture of it. Now, after that, what you want to do is you're going to want to pry this out. And you can see that Oh, I, I did not expect that to happen so fast, but as you saw, because one side was uh, released of its tension, this was able to come out as well. And, oh geez, I can't hold out both of these at the same time. But this is what the brake pad looks like. All right, so like I said, there are some parts that you may need to make sure that you keep track of the orientation of, like this pronged piece right here. You want to make sure what, fi what uh, position it's facing in. We already have taken video of it, and we can also compare it to the other side. Uh, that's why I said uh, don't take them both apart at the same time, and that's why, so we can compare to the other side. But just uh, take uh, attention of this pronged piece, and some other pieces that might fall, like this one in the back, and some other ones back there. But that This is one that you want to keep track of. Alright, so once you've taken that brake pad out, the next step is to compare these parts. Now, looking at a first-hand glance, um, it kind of looks like... This isn't a genuine part because it doesn't have any markings on it. Like this one has HJ22 and AO. This one doesn't have anything on it. So it looks like this is an aftermarket part. And also comparing the, the right side of the left brake pad. So let me flip that around. It looks like that one's also not aftermarket. I mean, this one's this one is aftermarket. These ones are actually the genuine parts. So next up is to take out uh, this uh, this brake pad, and it's uh, con it's connected to the brake by this connection right here. So the way to take it out is basically you want to loop this, you want to loop it upwards, and try to finagle it out through that gap right there. And I might not be able to show on camera, but I'm going to attempt it right now. So the other, the other way, uh, the other method of replacing the brake pad is actually just to keep this part on, this gray part, and just take off the clip right here, and actually just to replace, only replace this outer part. Instead, we're going to take out both parts, and let me get the pliers. Probably use a bigger plier for this one, and let's hope this works. So you can see where I'm trying to finagle it upwards and trying to loop it through. But as you can see, I'm not having much luck on it, so I'm going to leave it to my dad. Alright, so as you can see, we finally got the part out. Now, after we've taken out, uh, we just want to recommend because looking at this uh, spring right by itself, just look how far it can go out. Oh, I guess I, I'm not strong to show, but when my dad took it out, he was able to stretch it out and... Okay, so you can just see how far it can go. And looking back, now we realize that's going to be a nightmare putting it back in. 
So we just recommend that you just take the clip out itself. And in order to do that, you just put one side, one arm of a plier to the side of the clip and one part is leveraged on the head of that knob. And just take that clip out. Oh, I, I already bent it a bit. I don't wanna bent it too much. We don't necessarily actually have to do this because we're doing the entire part itself anyway. But just in case you need to see it. And we're just giving you ideas anyway. It's a bit hard to get in position for. So one more thing to know is that for these uh, two brake pads with the uh, arm right here. Uh, for the 2004-2007, they look like this. Uh, with this little knob sticking out and a clip. However, for the 2008-2009 version... It looks like this. It's actually riveted in, so you're not able to even take the clip out. And that leaves you only able to, t to take this out using the brake line. So, uh, fun fact by the way, I think this part comes with not just the Toyota Prius, but the Toyota Yaris. Um, it may be some other cars, but that's what the box says, the Yaris. Uh, so that's pretty cool. All right, so next step is after we've looked at these parts, just wanna make sure that they're all the right parts because when you buy these brake pads, they come in pairs. They all, they have the markings on them. You have left for left and right for the other side. And you also wanna make sure that you compare these two to make sure that they're the right uh, brake pad. You can tell that this part is the same as this part because this um, knob right here is less uh, protruding as this one. So that this means that this uh, brake pad goes on the right. So next step after this is to transfer the parts from here, which includes this bracket and the spring, to the other uh, brake pad, to the replacement brake pad. Alright. Alright. So this bracket, I think you just loop, loop it out. You So I think you just loop it out of the knob. And in order to do that, you have to sort of make... So you can see that right here, there's an arm that keeps it from going out. So we're going to try to angle that downwards. Or maybe I should take the spring out first. See, this is my first time trying to do this, so it might be a bit new to me. Alright, so what I've noticed is that if you press down on this, actually, you're actually able to take this, uh, this knob right out to protrusion. So my dad said that if we do that, then it's going to be harder to take it out because of the spring. So what we're going to do first is we're going to actually take the spring out and we're going to take the pliers. Just loop that out. And if we take the spring out, then it should be inherently easy to just take this bracket out. There we go. So the bracket looks like this. And we're going to put it on the, the replacement part. Make sure that's the right replacement part. So it goes on the back, and remember the orientation. Remember that it sort of goes like, like, okay. So it goes like this. How do I? No, we're good. Now I forgot the orientation. <laughs> oh, okay. There it is. So orientation, this, this long part is jutting out, and this um, protrusion is going inward, so that it should be able to go into that rectangular hole right there. So we're going to put that in, make sure that we loop it onto the knob as well. And you should see now that we have everything in place, and now we just have to put the spring on. Now, I remember that this side is the one that is going under, and it should be intuitive how you put it on, but... It looks like that there's like a tiny little, a tiny little hole for the spring to catch onto. So let me just see how I can do that. Maybe I should put put the spring on the top first, and then I should try to stretch it down. Uh, sorry if you guys might not be able to see this. <sighs> there we go. So the spring is catched. Just to test it, we're going to press down on it. And it's not going back down. Okay. So make sure that everything is working properly. It looks like this one is working. 
well. Okay. There we are. Make sure you put the spring on in the right position, by the way. All right, so now going in reverse, we're going to do installation. Now, as for putting the this part back on, um, I'm gonna let my dad handle that because although it is a very simple process, it is very tedious. All you have to do is tr stretch this back so that the thin, thin line is revealed and finagle it through the, where is it? Finagle it through this gap right here. All right, so we figured out uh, the easy way to do it. Uh, this works better if you have two people. What you wanna do is you wanna take a vice grip and you want to take pliers then you want to stretch it out so that the thin wire is exposed and then what you want to do is you want to take the uh, brake pad and you see this uh hook shape what you want to do is you want to loop it through using this small side first so kind of like uh how do i describe it kind of like uh you're trying to fit a rectangle like a very uh odd shaped object into a hole so you're trying to sort of finagle it into the uh, opening. That's what it looks like. All right, so we're gonna try to try to simulate it. But imagine this is the spring, and what you're gonna do is you wanna take the vice grip, you wanna fix it onto it, then you wanna pull this back. Uh, this is a bit too far. But you wanna pull it back. This is about how much it was. And then what you wanna do is you wanna you wanna swing it on. So first, this small side goes on first, and then you sort of want to fin you you wanna swing it into the position. Now, because this is a bit too big, it's not going to show it as well. Maybe actually it does fit. I think it might fit. No, it's just a bit too big for me to show. Well, oh well. All right, so now we're gonna position the uh, this uh, arm right here. And in order to do that, uh, you might have to get down under here so you can see. So this spring goes above this bracket. And then we're going to flip this over. And then bend this down and rest it right here while we work on the other side. Okay, good. So next step is we're going to put this other arm on. And that goes on intuitively. It just goes on like this. Remember that the bracket was in the back, so you might not be able to see it as clearly. But after that, we're going to take the spring right here. Actually, this is going to be a bit hard for me to show. But we're going to take the bottom spring. I'm going to put it behind the. We're going to put it behind the bracket. So we're going to take this bracket. We're going to take the spring. And then we're going to loop it through this hole right here. So it might be a bit hard for me to show. Let me just move this light here. So it's really hard to show right now, but... Okay, there we go. So what you want to do is loop it behind and put it behind the bracket. And then you want to take, take the other arm and you want to loop it on. And then after that, make sure that both of the arms are tucked behind this bracket. Oh. As well as a spring. It might be a bit hard to finagle. And on the top, we're just going to make sure that they're both aligned with this. Uh, it is really hard to show you with only two arms, but you want to make sure that both of these are sort of aligned with the recess on the master, on the, uh, master cylinder right here. And I'm going to make sure it's also aligned right here. And then, ooh, this is going to be a bit tricky to explain. Okay, so while I leave that resting, we're going to focus our attention on the this spring right here. So as you saw before, this, um, I think, gear or wheel was on the left side. It was on this side. If you actually look a bit closer, I'm not sure if you could see, but from here, you can see that there's a place that the wheel fits in. And what we're gonna and that and what that does is this wheel allows you to make the length of this entire piece either shorter or longer. Because as the brake wears out, this is going to expand in order to accommodate it. And when we're putting this in, we want to make sure that this is shorter by turning this wheel. 
uh, so that the brake drum is easier to put on. So since the brake pads are about the same length, we're not gonna put it. We're not going to screw it in too much, but I think that's a good length. And we're just going to try to put it on. So this is going. Remember the position that they were in, because as you can see, these prongs are uh, different sizes. And I think intuitively, the shorter prongs are in the back, so it's easier to fit on. But and this this longer one is on the left side. So how am I gonna show this on camera? This is a bit hard. All right, so in order to put this on, we're gonna do it in steps. So first, we're gonna let this thing uh, hang freely by putting the spring on, which we've already done. And then we're going to put this on. Remember that this is the longer part of the spring. First, we're going to put um, the prongs on. And I think, first we're gonna put the prongs on. The shorter one goes in the back. Let me just put this back on. And then we're going to put the spring in. So this one, you have to angle it in. So just keep that in mind when you're doing this. Okay, so once you have the spring in, and everything looks A-OK, -okay, I'm going to put this back on. Loop it around. Make sure that's under the br bracket. Loop this in. Make sure that it all goes through. It might be a bit hard to finagle through, but eventually you should be able to loop it through. If it doesn't go through, that means there's something on the bottom that you might have to finagle a bit. So if it gets a bit tricky for you, uh, you can try to remove the bottom spring, which you've already done. And now we're going to try putting it again. So like I said, just loop it through. And this is going to be a bit tedious, but you want to... Oh. You want to position the prong in. Oh wait, give me a second. To deal with that. Make sure that the spring is out of the way of the prong. The spring's actually in the prong. Give me a second. Okay. So once we have that out of order. Okay. So now we're going to loop that through. Like I said, uh, actually I haven't said it before, but fixing a car is very difficult. I always say that diagnosing the problem is the hardest part, but actually applying fixing the car is definitely hard too. So the next step is to put the prong in. That's going to be a bit tricky. You want to make sure that this is up as well. All right, so after uh, a lot of finagling, actually, we figured out that uh, a good way to do it is to first attach the spring, then to secure the right side of the brake. So as you can see, we put the spring back on. Swing this back over. And then we're gonna, then just for now, we're gonna just try to position it for now. And then after that, we're going to secure it with the other spring. So let me just do that. Give me a second. Let me take the uh, the bar. We're going to swing it around and up and over into here. So let me actually take this out first. So we're going to do that just a bit last. Let me just try to position this in place. Then we're going to put it in, and then we're going to secure it. Oh. 
Oh wait, no. The ridge is supposed to be on this side. This is where the ridge is supposed to be. Okay. So then I'm going to put this on. What? Maybe we should reshoot this. All right. So there's a few things that we noticed. Uh, so first off, um, we actually got everything on. And after we put the everything in position, we made sure we put the springs on. We put the left side on first and then the second one because it was easier that way. Then we noticed that it was a bit off-centered. And because this is a brake that pushes out from the inside, we want to make sure that everything is centered so that it's not uneven. So because we noticed that it was unsentered, we unsecured it from these springs, made sure it was in the proper position, and then we secured it. And then we tried to put the brake, back, the brake drum back on. However, we noticed that we couldn't put the brake drum back on. And that's because, like I said before, we have to adjust the spring. Alright, I'm going to try putting the drum on, just so you can see. And it was like this when you took it off, so. You can see that right now, it's not going on. even though everything is aligned. Okay. So when we noticed that we couldn't put the brake, brake drum back on, that's when we figured out that we have to readjust the spring. There are two ways, uh, two methods to do this. Uh, one is from the back, and there's something that you can adjust with a screwdriver. Uh, actually, I can't show you because it's on the back. But the easy way to do it is you want to take two screwdrivers, at least this is the way that we did it, is you want to take two screwdrivers, and you want to push back on this, or is it on this side? Okay, so you want to leverage the screwdriver and push this down. And while you do that, you want to spin this gear right here. And I mentioned earlier, that is what you do. You use that wheel to adjust it. And I think that it's spinning it downwards. So what you want to do is you want to spin it downwards. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm spinning it downwards. All right, so at this point, what you want to do is you want to put the brake drum on. Now, if you're not able to put the brake, uh, the brake drum on, what you want to do is you want. Give me a second. What you want to do is you want to readjust it, and in order to do that, you just, uh, like I said, you just push this and then spin that wheel, and then once you've loosened it a bit, uh, what you want to do is you want to try it again. Once, you've, once you're able to actually get the brake drum on, what you want to do is you want to spin it a few times. Make sure it all sounds good. Okay. And once it's at a good place, what you want to do is you want to tighten it from the back uh, using the screwdriver. Oh, I can't actually show you. Uh, here's the cover for the back, by the way. Uh, I'll put that on later and then you're done. So just make sure, just look around the entire drum to make sure it's a consistent, uh, consistently placed in, and then you're done. <laughs> I'm Ayman, and I just showed you how to, uh, I gave you ideas on how to remove and replace the brake pad and brake drum. Uh, we actually have a replacement right here for a 2004-2009 Toyota Prius. If you want to know how to replace the wheel cylinder, the brake wheel cylinder, which looks like this, it was the hydraulic thing that was at the top, if you remember. Uh, then I have a video on it. That's actually going to be my next video. And if you want to know how to uh, bleed the line, then I'm also going to do a video on that. So go check that out, and I'm done. So I'm Ayman. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and like our other videos on I and Ayman, especially the Toyota PS videos. We're doing a lot of those lately, and I'll see you there. Signing out. Peace.